Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Faction Wars here with Azazel. Today, we are going to be covering the Green Boss uh, and the factions associated with Green Boss. So we have Organ Tribe and we have the Dark Elves. I got my man Azazel back here with me. We're going to go through, uh, explain, start off like we usually do, explaining the entire boss mechanics. And then we're going to get into each faction associated with this boss and give you guys the optimal budget way to, to beat it and uh, let you know which champions we advise on new building, just as we have done in the previous episodes. Azazel, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for having me again. You're the man. All right, lead us the way. Okay, so as uh, Manable mentioned, we're going to cover the green boss. And the green boss specifically is on Ogryn tribes and Dark Elves uh, faction. So let's dive, uh, first of all, into the mechanics of the boss. So once again, it's a boss with two adds. And this time, like with the yellow boss, these two adds provide the support for the boss. So the add on the right provides the, the block debuffs for one turn, no heal, just the block debuffs. And then add on the left provides damage block also for one turn. That's all they do. The boss itself, every time you hit the boss, he also has a passive. The person who hit the boss will get the HP burn for one turn applied to them. Now, the second ability that the boss has, it's a AOE ability that he hits everyone with and he drains a turn meter uh, from your entire team by 50 percent the aoe ability also other than applying the turn meter decrease also applies the aoe true fear for two turns and then the a1 ability hits one target also drains turn meter and applies poisons this is his kit now he's the boss that has that all abilities can be resisted. So green boss is one of the bosses where you have to stack high resistance. This is the easiest and safest way to beat uh, the boss itself. Because if, if there's no poisons, fears, HP burns coming in, it's easy to mitigate the damage. The only thing you need to worry about is turn meter decrease, but even that can be resisted. So. It's just a boss with a lot of debuffs that can be resisted, guys. So the primary strategies for both uh, factions is to run a high resistance teams for the most part, or you can uh, use different strategies with like many eaters and other things, uh, which will go into detail to continuously apply the block uh, debuffs. Uh, when we're saying high resistance, just understand that optimally what we want is between 275 to be on the safe side, 300 resistance on every champion for for yeah. your debuff for the boss's debuffs to get resisted. So just so you have actually a number targeted. Go ahead, Azazel. Uh, yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, roughly that number. What do we have uh, from the uh, legendaries in this faction? I think they're all usable, including the Grubtek, even though he's not the optimal choice. Uh, the reason I picked him first is because he's a sore spot on <laughs> a lot of people's uh, consciousness. Nobody likes to pull him from shards, even the people who never did the fusion. But he actually, he's actually a very good champion for you to finish the faction. You don't even need to have him 60. That's the benefit of uh, having him. And as a legendary, getting him to 50 is actually just getting levels. That's it. Uh, no books, no nothing. Just him in decent, decently fast gear. For the damage source, you have many options. You can go with Bigun, War Mother. Surprise, surprise. She's actually a very good champion in Faction Wars. And last but not least is Ignatius probably the best legendary out of them all for this faction because of his kit unresistable aoe hp burn provoke stun on a1 low chance still pretty uh pretty significant when it procs shamrock is a okay option if you need a lot of support he has a ton of buffs uh, he feels the turn meter like he does a lot of things uh not necessarily very useful but in the faction wars 
he will provide that usefulness. This guy is actually good in Faction Wars. His kit is perfect. Uh, he places the shield, once broken, heals everyone. He places increased attack and increased defense so he can buff any champion on your team, whether it's defense-based or attack-based, they will benefit. And of course, he places the block damage on anyone who is uh, less than 30 HP. So once again, providing that clutch damage mitigation when you need it the most. And his A1 also stuns. Gurgur is actually useful now, now with his uh, decreased cooldowns, but that's only if he's booked. So he's a Void Legendary, guys. If you have him, use him. If you don't, whatever. Let's go to the epics. Immediately, Rush steals the show. We all gonna get him. Or if you played the game long enough, you already have him. He is the best source of heals and support for your team. He has the Leech, which will be applied regardless of affinity. He has the continuous heal. He has like everything in his uh, kit to succeed in the faction wars for you. Before him, it was based on your uh, pools. Now, uh, he, he, he really expanded uh, what you can use in, in your faction. Like he really did, guys. Uh, same with this ability. Either decrease attack or decrease crit damage is, is useful. So having said that, because you now have him, almost all epics are useful. Skull Crusher is actually good up until stage 21. In 21, he will just die. Don't use him there. Grimskin, decent damage dealer. Defense based, uh, if you have him, level him up, use him. Shadow Bones can be both used as a debuffer or actually a decent damage dealer if you want. Uh, Accord Brawler is actually horrible. <laughs> Do not use him in Faction Wars. Man Eater, he makes it easy. Him and Grush and any other three champions and you're good to go. That's, that's pretty much it. Not everyone have him, but whoever has him, if you have two of them, even better. Uh, this is what's called like Mariator Cheese. Uh, your Mariators will be fast enough together with Grush to have a complete coverage of your team with the continuous heals, with the leeches, uh, unkillables, and debuff blockers. Tower Titan can be used because of uh, A1 defense down and additional heals, but He's okay. I've seen people use Cage Breaker. He's actually decent on the boss stage because of the defense down on A1. Now let's go all the rares. This guy is a superstar of the faction, guys. If you have him and you're lacking the support champions, level him up, make him fast with decent HP and high resistance. That's it. His kit is ridiculously simple. Chance to proc extra hit. So War Master is a good idea on him. Removes all debuffs, heals them. He that's actually a pretty decent he, uh, heal on three turns, and uh, heals one ally unfortunately for seventy five percent of their HP. But it can crit. So this is a very good champion. I used him. I still use him. A lot of other people I know use him to beat the faction. Now. Last but not least, Bellaware. One of the best rares in, in, in the game, hands down. Him, depending on what you have in your faction, you can go anyway with him. Savage set for maximum damage, stun set, provoke set, day set, whatever you want. Though day set is the, the worst of them because he always AoEs, but the provoke and stun is the way to go in my opinion. Um, you will never go wrong with him. If, if provoke, just Tank him up. If stun, uh, you can do like a hybrid build between damage and stun. Last but not least is Flesh Eater. So why I mention him? Some people have War Mother and nothing else in the faction, right? And then you don't have Man Eater. So what happens is when you're going to reach the stage 19 with this faction, stage 19, last wave is three Atours and two Kalias. What happens is Atours gain this uh, ridiculous passive in addition to what they have. They heal every time you attack them. So it's super difficult to kill them. And since they all counterattacked, they will keep provoking your team and they will just club you to death. 
So what you do is you apply the increased attack buff on War Mother. You apply, you put the bombs down. You have your free restoker to to debuff the War Mother, and then you just blow them all up. Just the entire wave in one clean. Uh, wow! Nice progress. Same you do, by the way, for other waves. Uh, Valkyrie wave, same thing. It, it's the same wave uh, on stage 19. It's two Valkyries, one tour world. Gives a lot of people trouble. You do the same thing. Just make your one mother fast enough, uh, that guy fast enough, and you're good to go. So it's like a mini cheese of, of, of the faction. Nothing else comes to mind, to be honest, um, from the faction in terms of the champion. They are really lackluster with what they have do you want so, to showcase a run yeah yeah i will i will i'm i'm gonna show the case the runs so as you see green boss we start the run and in the run i have uh fury stoker bellower grush man eater actually now i finally got the man eater um before i used the group took and I have Ignatius. And uh, the wave is, uh, once again, it's that random wave with a bunch of damage dealing champions. So the waves themselves are nothing to write home about. And then we come to the boss. There you go. Admirator went first. And now Bellower attacked. And he had low resistance. He got the HP burn on him. And then boss AoE, my entire team, applied the True Fear and drop my turn meter but because i have grush he will heal everyone back up my as you can see my ignatius is actually resisting everything not once every a single ab oh just a hp uh, burn got applied but that's rng so you cannot predict that that's why man eater is a better choice than gamble on resistance because eventually something will go through the resistance so this this is all the debuffs. Uh, HP burn, poison on A1, and AOE ability every three turns that puts the true fear and drops the turn meter of the entire group. So you have to watch out for that. That's about it. That's the mechanics of the boss. I think we should move on to the Let's Dark do Elves. Dark Elves recently, with uh, several additions to the faction, has actually a lot of different options now. In my opinion, all legendaries other than um, Vizier and Astrolith can be used in the faction, including Q Queen Eva. Like, she can be a decent AoE nuker in the faction if you lack in that. Ghostborn, of course, with the defense down and uh, uh, and his uh, attack up. Blind Seer is, she can carry the infraction just by herself. Ever since they changed her, so she doesn't kill herself anymore with her revive and uh, reduce the cooldown on her Dark Shroud to three turns once booked. This is very significant. Visix is actually okay. She is okay legendary to have in, in the faction. Every, everyone else just provides damage or actually damage. High, yeah. high, dark Elves mostly are damage dealing faction when you look at it. Well, everyone's so, going to have that Void Legendary um, that played the game long enough. So Yeah, Visix is uh, once again available to everyone. So if you don't have great support, like let's say Captain Tamilla or, you know, uh, for example, you have Psylar, but you don't have Madame. Use Visix. She will keep you alive because Dark Elf, unlike Ogryn, actually has the pesky Valkyrie wave that nobody likes. So it's a challenge to beat that. So from the epics, Kaiden, a lot of guides already been made for, about him. He turned out to be a very good champion. And oh, he yeah. is good in Faction Wars as well because very of good. his... Uh, Revive of two allies, not one, but two. He can provoke, small chance, but still, it's there. And of course, decrease attack on AoE. Plus, as we all know, he hits 
relatively hard. Captain Tamila, she's a decent support, but that's the, that's it, decent. Um, I personally will not use her, but she can be used. Fan Cleric, great support. Lots of heals, debuff swap, and he also revives people. Lua is decent damage dealer from the epics. Uh, that's about it, about her. Now, the superstars of this faction is Psylar, number one. Oh yeah. All abilities are AoE. What it means? Stun set. You put stun set on her, she is void. Affinity is irrelevant. Uh, well, for, for stun set, it's, it's irrelevant anyways, but her other ability is, as I mentioned before, with the accuracy, this is a big deal. Because when booked, this is 100%. Unlike Piedma, who was at 50, she is at 100%. So on the Valkyrie wave, you apply the debuff of reduced accuracy, and the Valkyries do not drop your turn meter. So once again, you cycle through your uh, turns quickly. On the boss, it's even more valuable. Once you put this decreased accuracy on the boss down, you don't have to fear about any debuffs. Trust me, guys, I did like uh, speed runs when I was testing. No healers, no nothing, just her, three damage dealers, and Madame. Once that uh, decreased accuracy landed on the boss, the boss did not land a single ability on my damage dealers. And they all were at like 150 resistance. So it's it's a huge ability. Once again, AoE. Oh, and of course, last but not least, I mean, look at this. Places 30% decreased speed and decreases the turn meter of all enemies by 40%. This is huge on a four turn cooldown. When you have her, Psylar, and this lady right here, Madame, you can use any other three champions. Whatever you want. Doesn't matter. These two will provide all the debuffs. They will remove all the buffs and just make them run uh, all the runs, all the stages relatively smooth and, and, and painless, in my opinion. Not everyone has the luxury, but still. From the rares, I will highlight Kale. Decent option of damage, of course. A lot of people started with him, so there's a tons of people with level 60 Kale use him. Cold Heart, another superstar rare that people use practically everywhere, other than the clan boss and arena. She is a great damage dealer for this faction, as also as a turn meter manipulator. And last but not least, is a pain keeper. Probably the strongest choice of rare, even even better than the Cold Heart. Because uh, if you don't have Cold Heart, that's fine. But if you have Pain Keeper, she will re reduce the cooldowns of all your abilities every four turns, provide massive heals because it's based on her HP, and she can fill her turn meter pretty quickly. So also HP Aura, which is always good for the faction war. So this is pretty much the... There's nothing in Uncommons or Commons that... Some say... You might use Spirit Host, but I think she's useless in, in, in the faction. There's many better options. This is just not good enough. The increased attack is uh, is whatever. And uh, what I have to say is like, if you're have if you fortunate enough to have another Silar, um, this is a great place to even have one at level 50. If you don't want to oh, level yes. the second one for level mm -hmm. 60, but it'll make this faction super, super easy. Yeah. Two Silars is... Uh, a completion of all levels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a fact. So let's just uh, showcase the run because uh, this faction actually has the Valkyrie wave. So as you see, I elected to use Painkeeper, Lua, uh, Blind Seer, and uh, Madame and Psylar. I have them all. I also, at this point when I record was recording, I already had... Uh, fan cleric but fan cleric is just the worst uh, worst version of blinds here as it stands right now um, relatively speaking the run will not change in any way so let's go ahead and go straight to the valkyrie wave so here we go at the valkyrie wave. immediately all the defense got dropped on the valkyries then th their speed got dropped then uh, their turn meter got dropped 
Okay, so now Psylar went with her AoE, stunned one of the Valkyries and applied uh, decrease accuracy on all of them. And as you saw just now, Blind Seer applied her uh, A2. Every single champion on my team got uh, resist, uh, resisted the Valkyrie Jealousy, which is the passive. Every single one of them. So it means I didn't lose a single... Uh, bar of turn meter. This is how powerful the accuracy, uh, AOE accuracy skill is on this wave. So let's just move to the boss and same will be on the boss. Once again, accuracy, uh, decreased accuracy landed on the boss and now everything is being resisted. The boss run is done at this point. So um, if you have Psylar, and you never used her before. Let's say you landed other champions, you just progressed through the game, and you kind of left her on the sides because she doesn't do much for you anymore in dungeons. Level her up, put her in a faction wars, and you are good to go. With Psylar, you actually don't really need Madame. Madame is just a bonus. Yeah. But Psylar is the key of the entire faction. She makes the faction easy. Without them, you probably need uh, multiple layers of supports, uh, like Pain uh, Keeper, Kaiden probably, maybe Fan Cleric on top of Kaiden, and maybe only one damage dealer. So it's it's uh, you just need to surround your damage dealer with a lot of support and kind of slowly grind through the waves. That's the only way if you don't have either Madame or Psylar. And I think that uh, wraps up the, both of these factions. Uh, I'm not sure what else sh uh, should we mention. Once again, guys, I will mention this. Don't want to uh, sound like a broken record, but if you have some other ideas or if you use some other items, I've seen someone try Luria, never seen much success with her, but maybe she can be used uh, to a great success. Uh, as always, Post it in the comments or discords or maybe a reddit thread you bumped into it's always welcome perfect thank you guys again so much we are saving the best for last so the last episode is gonna have that dreadful dreadful red boss and we're gonna give you the absolute best tips to actually clear those factions out so stay tuned until the next one azazel huge shout out once again man for everything you've done Thank you so much. I can't thank you enough, brother. Thank you for having me.